Welcome to Module 4, Lecture 1, in Microbiological Risk Assessment. The title of the lecture is Introduction to Microbiological Risk Assessment in Food Safety. My name is Håkan Wieger and I work in the group of Epidemiology and Microbial Gen Genomics in the Food Institute at Danish Technical University. Uh, the material I'm going to present has been developed together with my colleague Martin Nauter. After this lecture, you will be able to explain the aim of microbiological risk assessment and why it is performed. You will be able to explain the meaning of the words hazard and risk. And you will be able to list the four elements of microbiological risk assessment and explain how they are connected. And finally, you will be able to give examples of typical outputs from microbiological risk assessment. What is the aim of risk assessment? Typically, there is a need to decide about how to control a food safety problem. And this is typical the initiation of, uh, to perform microbiological risk assessment. And I can give an example uh, of a food safety problem. Salmonella is a very common cause of uh, foodborne disease in the European Union. And pork and pig made products are important sources of salmonella infections in humans. The European Food Safety Authorities, EFSA, are going to develop recommendations about controlling, uh, control measures in pig production and production line in the pork products that reduce the risk for the consumers in relation to salmonella. But because there are no perfect knowledge about the effects of these different control measures, how should they know what to decide about the recommendations? So the aim is to have some support to the decision and there is the, the risk assessment make its uh, role. Because one way to obtain a good decision is to put together existing knowledge, but also the lack of knowledge uh, using a predefined approach, and that's risk assessment. So you should look at risk assessment as a tool to support decisions. And I have here some examples of uh, questions that you can answer with a risk assessment. And that can be, what is the expected reduction of salmonella cases in humans by reducing the prevalence of salmonella infection in pigs by 50%? reducing the concentration of salmonella in contaminated carcasses by 90%, increasing the scalding temperature uh, at the slaughterhouse by 10 degrees Celsius, or lowering the pH in a fermented sausage from 5.8 to 5.6. These are questions that risk managers typically ask risk assessors to answer. So in a broader term, we have the overall concept we call risk analysis. And risk analysis is to make good decisions with imperfect knowledge to increase the food safety. So the decision is made by the risk managers, whereas dealing with the knowledge and put the knowledge and imperfect knowledge together is the aim for the, uh, is the work for the risk assessors. But first of all, we need to have the definition in place with the word hazard and risk. A microbiological hazard is the microorganism in itself. Whereas a microbiological risk is the likelihood that microbial has a cause disease in the consumer. Here we have two pictures. We have one picture with some salmonella on petri dishes and we have a picture here of a person eating sausages and in this case we assume that there are salmonella in the sausages. In both pictures we have salmonella. It means that the hazards are present in both pictures. Whereas the risk is very different in this case here, we have the salmonella in the petri dish and there is a very low likelihood that the person holding these dishes would develop foodborne salmonella, uh, salmonellosis. Whereas in this case, we have a person that is exposed to the hazard and has a likelihood to develop salmonellosis. So the hazards are the same in the two pictures, whereas the risk is very different. So if we put a more strict definition of the risk, the risk em embeds both the probability and the type of adverse health effect. And here I have some examples of it. We can have a risk that is negligible or high probability of getting diarrhea eating the sausage. And here we have the probability or the likelihood and we have the adverse effect, which in this case is diarrhea. We can also measure the risk in, in numbers. In the next example, we have a probability of 0.03% for random serving causing nausea. So again, the probability and adverse effect. And we have two other cases here where we have a different unit. One dead person per 100 million servings of sausages 
or 38 cases of salmonella related to reactive or sorry 38 cases of salmonella related reactive arthritis per year in a country due to sausage consumption so in all these cases we have the likelihood and we have the specification of the adverse effect the characteristics of the risk is very different uh, for different pathogens here i have a picture where we on the horizontal axis has the different adverse effect ranging from mild gastroenteritis which means light diarrhea to severe diarrhea reactive arthritis and to death and on the vertical axis we have the number of recorded cases in a large region we can in this case assume that it's Europe we have two hazards the, the, one of the hazards is rotavirus and the other hazard is salmonella if we look at the cases over here with the mild gastroenteritis we can say if we only consider this mild gastroenteritis rotavirus is the one that embeds the highest risk for the consumer whereas if we look at the more severe gastroenteritis they have the same probability if we enlarge the scale a little, uh, a little bit and look at the reactive arthritis we now say that salmonella has a much higher number of cases of reactive arthritis compared to rotavirus so in this case the risk the highest uh, the, the pathogen that embeds the highest risk is uh, the, the salmonella and also if we take the, the death cases here we see that very few few cases of people dying of rotavirus but we have about 45 50 people dying of salmonella so in this case we see here that the risk is very different the risk characteristics for these two pathogens okay. the aim of risk assessment as a risk assessor is to estimate the risk that's the core so to say and to do that you need to, to figure out two things you need to predict how many CFUs, if we are uh, talking about bacteria, are the consumer exposed to. And you need to figure out how does the consumer respond to that exposure. The focus on microbiological risk assessment is very much on the production line. Because in the production line we can actually do something about the exposure. A and the core activity is to develop some kind of models that can express the change of number of pathogens in the product along the production line and in that way we can predict the number of CFUs as time of consumption. And here I have a picture where we have the uh, vertical axis is the number of CFUs. So in this example we have the pathogen present in the primary production. We send the pigs to slaughterhouse. We will have some slaughterhouse hygiene. We're lowering the number of CFUs. We have a sausage making fabric that can be an increase and also during storage we can have growth of the bacteria and then we have the heat treatment just before consumption where we have a reduction. If we can describe this process we can predict the number of CFUs that the consumer is exposed to. Second we also have to consider what is happening in the consumer because the consumer is the, is the end point so to say in microbiological risk assessment. So that's the question number two. <clears throat> we have a pathway from entering where the pathogen entering the food to uh, the consumer getting ill. And we normally split this pathway into two elements. We have the exposure assessment dealing with the hazard in the food item until consumption. And we have the hazard characterization or the dose response that is taking care of, or is looking into what is happening in the consumer after consumption. To estimate the risk we need to integrate the dose response and exposure assessment and I will try to illustrate that in this picture. <clears throat> what we have here is what we call a dose response relationship where we on the vertical axis has the probability of getting sick ranging from 0 to 1 and on the horizontal axis we have the doses number of CFUs and here we have it on a log scale. And this is a dose-response relationship where we can say that an increased dose gives an increased probability of getting sick. And this relationship we very often find in the literature. In the exposure assessment, we estimate the number of CFUs per serving 
and then we put that in on the horizontal axis and go to the graph here, the dose response relationship, and read out the probability of getting sick given this exposure. In this case, it will be 40% of getting sick. This is an extraordinary high probability for food safety, but it's just the sake to illustrate clearly what it is about. Most of the time we have very low exposures and low uh, probability of getting sick. The unit of uh, the risk estimate, as, we mentioned, as I mentioned before, includes both the probability and the adverse effect. So in this case, we have 40%, or we can transform it to the number of cases per 100,000 servings. So we will have 40,000 cases of illness per 100,000 servings. And here we see we have the adverse effect, which is illness, and we have the likelihood of the adverse effect, 40,000 cases out of 100,000. So it's important when we measure risk to specify what is the adverse effect, not only the probability, but the adverse effect. How to estimate the relative effect then? Then you use the same model under alternative scenarios representing potential control measures. And you estimate the, potential, uh, the risk in each scenario and then you divide the estimated risk in the intervention or the alternative scenario by the baseline model or the baseline result, which is the current situation. For instance, you can have an answer by decreasing the prevalence of infected pigs in the primary production by 50%, the risk for the consumer will decrease to one-tenth of the current situation. Here I have illustrated the, the different elements in risk assessment. It starts with hazard identification. First of all, you need to know which hazard are you working with in your risk assessment. This is very often decided by risk managers that identify the problem they want to solve. Then you do the exposure assessment where you try to predict the number of pathogens in the food item just before consumption. And you do the hazard characterization, which is uh, focusing on what is happening in the consumer. How does the consumer respond to the exposure to the hazard? And then you bring together the exposure with the hazard characterization, the dose response, and estimate the risk. So you have the estimate of the risk in this case. This was the last slide of this lecture. Thank you for watching.